for the multiple award-winning author of dark paranormal fiction, you might be expected to be meeting a rather strange and brooding character. So I'm very delighted to be able to surprise you with the utterly charming, utterly delightful and very, very talented Lisa Kessler. The best writing tip I ever got was from Ray Bradbury. And I got to meet him a couple times before he passed away and I hadn't gotten published. So I asked him how I could improve my writing and his suggestion surprised me. It was to write a new short story every week for a year. And it took me a little while to wrap my brain around that, but in the end, I did it for a year and a half. So I wrote over 100 short stories while writing two novels, and it definitely was the best thing I ever did for my writing. You learn so much. You'll be a different writer at the end. Highly recommend it. Write short. Oh my gosh, picking my favorite book is like picking your favorite child. Uh, but I can tell you my most recent book that had me addicted to uh, the keyboard, I had to know what was gonna happen next, was Magnolia Mystic, which is the first book in a new series for me called The Sentinels of Savannah. And it was just a fun writing experience. I have so much fun writing that series. I'm writing book three right now, and it's an adventure. And as a writer, you're always looking for something like that. If you don't hook me with, you know, the world's going to end, everyone's going to die, whatever those kind of stakes might be, um, if I'm not hooked by the first or second chapter, I'm, I'll probably move on to the next book in my Kindle. learn to write anywhere. I actually take care of my grandparents and um, also my mom's having health issues so I have learned to make playlists for my books and so I put my headphones in and I can be in the ER, I can be at the dentist, I can be anywhere and I can write. Um, so for me it's the playlist is more important than where I'm sitting although sitting on my couch is much more fun. Stephen King's The Shining and The Stand, definitely, and um, but probably the ones that made me actually start writing just for fun were The Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. My writing uniform, uh, especially near deadlines, days when I can wear my pajamas all day and then go up at night and go, oh, this is what I slept in last night. <laughs> I'm very guilty, <laughs> so, but it's nice. I did not always want to be an author. I actually am a trained opera singer. I did the Met auditions, I sang with San Diego Opera, I performed with a bunch of different musical theater companies, but what happened was I wrote for fun and I went to New Orleans for a trade show for work, got my palm read, and the reader asked me if I was a writer and I said no I sell window shades and she said you're going to be a famous writer someday and I thought what and I started thinking about it could I write a book and six months later my first book was written it took years to get it published but um, if she hadn't given me that nudge I don't I don't know if I would have done that she changed my life that day so thank you I actually do not plan my books usually much at all. Um, I get an idea in my head or a character in my head and I follow them wherever they go. So usually I try to know what the ending will be so I know where I'm going, but um, I am not a plotter at all. I try really hard to um, let the story unfold the way it wants to. Sometimes I have to rein it in, but for the most part, I, I try really hard to get that story out um, the way it wanted to, so. Oh my gosh, I have lost work before. <laughs> Two times, both times crying, don't lose your work. Um, but the worst was uh, I was writing Hunter's Moon. It's book two in the Moon series. I was 65 pages in, I hit save. And the next day when I went to open it, it said the file was corrupted. And I'm like, what? And I go to the computer store. And apparently when I hit save, it was right at the moment that there was a short in the motherboard in my laptop. And so, so they said even if I had carbonite, it would have 
saved a corrupted copy. So anyway, what I learned from that experience is to, I now I save my files with the date so that hopefully if that ever happens to me again, please no. But if it ever happens to me again, um, I will only lose a day or two of work instead of 65 pages. That was gut-wrenching. My books usually focus on someone who feels alone way too often and they find a family, people who love you no matter what. And I think that that is a powerful yearning that we all have. And I hope that um, when they finish my books, they feel like everyone is deserving of that, including them. Luckily, I don't get stuck writing very often, knock on wood, um, but the few times that I have had a scene where I thought, God, the scene is never going to end, I do turn to tarot cards. Um, when I'm not writing, I am a tarot card reader, and often I will yank out a tarot card and go, oh, she should fall overboard. And I hadn't thought of that. Um, so I use them both for character motivation and also for, you know, scenes that won't end. Yank a tarot card. Even if you're not into tarot cards as a writer, it's a really handy tool. Readers, I hope that you will read my books because you are looking for a paranormal adventure that's out of this world that um, makes you believe that maybe werewolves do live in Reno. Or maybe there are immortal pirates who still live in Savannah, Georgia. Um, come on the adventure. I promise. Dark Side has cookies. Thank you, Lisa Kessler, for sharing these great insights. And there's lots more to come on the Author Studio.